Hi, this is Pat Iyer with Legal Nurse Podcast, and today we'll talk to you about a subject that affects you on a direct and intimate basis, which is some of the tips for gracefully aging. I am sure that you are going to be aging no matter how old you are, because it's an inevitable process in our lives. And I wanted to bring some fresh insights by having Linda Myrick on the show. She is a certified personal trainer and a group fitness instructor through the American Council on Exercise and has been working in the fitness industry for almost 20 years. She is also taking care of and working with senior clients. So she specializes in senior adult fitness. And you may be familiar with some of the programs that are designed for fitness for older people such as uh, Tai Chi, Silver Sneakers, Silver and Fit, and the RSVP Foundation for Bone Building for Osteoporosis. Thank you, Linda, for being part of the show. And Linda was recommended to me by another one of my podcast guests, Casey Olson, who spoke about meal prep. Casey and I exchanged some thoughts on who might be excellent to talk about the aging process and how that affects all of us. So I invited Linda on the show. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Linda. I I really wanted to focus first on maintaining a positive outlook towards aging, because I think that it's, it's easy to get affected by references to senior citizens and elderly and how we define people who are older. So could you share your thoughts on maintaining that positive outlook that I'm talking about? Let me share with you a little bit, Pat, about my stages of getting to that positive outlook. When it all first started for me, I thought, oh gosh, this is going to suck. But yet when I was 36, everything was great. I had the great muscle mass. I was working out. Nothing hurt and everything. I turned 40 and I thought, okay. This perimenopause they keep talking about, not going to affect me. This is going to be a piece of cake. I'm fit. I'm healthy. I, 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 should, I won't have any problems. I'm going to fly through this thing. At 42, I got up one morning. I looked in the mirror, and I thought, oh, my God, what happened? It was like overnight. My chest was at my waist. My waist was at my hips, and my hips was at my ankles. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my gosh, what is mm-hmm. going on? So went along a little bit and then I had another little bump in my game plan and uh, I started feeling all the effects of the perimenopause, the, the mood swings, the uh, getting sad, the sweating started beginning. So I thought, okay, I've got to change my game plan here. So I thought, oh, I've got to go out to Barnes and Nobles. You know, of course, you're about to go in menopause and you want to go to Barnes and Nobles. Suzanne Summers had all of her books out on menopause. And, you know, what better person to go to to help you to get through the aging, initial aging process than an actor, right? Ha ha. But I did go ahead and go see my doctor and all, but with all of Suzanne's knowledge about hormone replacement. And so I was going to conquer this. And uh, so my doctor put me on the synthetic hormone replacement And it took the edge off. And then one day he said, well, we need to get you off this. We can't have you on it very much longer. And so uh, I was about 52 at that point. And so I went to see a nurse practitioner and she said, oh, you're depressed. And she put me on antidepressants. And I started crying 24 seven for about two or three days. I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. So I called up the doctor and he said, oh, no, no, no. We don't want you on this. And so there I was floating out there all by myself with this uh, menopause issues like so many of us uh, do. And I ran into a female doctor that used to be a gynecologist, retired, living down in Naples, Florida. And so I told her one day, I said, listen, I said, how do I do this? How do I handle this? She chuckled. She said, there's no pill. There's no way around it. Just toughen up and you're going to get through it. So uh, that's what I was doing. And I was doing real good with it until I got uh, about 55. And then all of a sudden, I put on 30 pounds, like in one month's time. I thought, 
no, this is not happening. And because I'm, I'm exercising, I'm working out, I'm eating healthy, there's no way I can put on 30 pounds in just one month. So um, I started going to, uh, and we started having doctors around with the um, bioidentical hormone replacement. So I tried one or two of those and uh, I even had one doctor, she got me on so much estrogen. She took my blood work that time, I went in to see her and she said, oh my God, we've got to get you off of this, you're about to have breast cancer. Hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is going on? How am I going to ever make it through this stuff? Is this going to be my life from now on? And uh, so I found a nurse practitioner and she did my blood panel for the year for my checkup. And so she did a thyroid antibodies test and found out I had Hashimoto's. And she got me on the right thyroid medicine, got that weight off and everything. So now when I wake up in the mornings and I look in the mirror, I'm not that 36 year rocking body anymore, but I'm that 60 year old uh, teacher that teaches five cycle classes a week, six senior adult strength and balance classes, personal training. My husband and I run road races. We walk, we hike, we kayak, and we do stand up paddle boarding. I've had three knee surgeries, osteoarthritis in my knees, scoliosis in my thoracic spine, and in my lumbar spine, but I'm moving, I'm healthy, I'm happy in the direction of my life that it's taken. At 40, I thought it was going to be a piece of cake. At 67, I can tell you it was a piece of cake, but it had a whole lot of walnuts thrown into it. Mm. <laughs> One of the hardest things we find in life, especially as we get into our 40s, is loving ourselves. And especially going through these stages that I was talking about, it can be difficult sometimes of loving ourselves. And sometimes family members that aren't real supportive or employers or bosses or whatnot can also, in technology, make it frustrating to love ourselves. But no matter where we are in life, loving ourselves is the most important thing. There's many ways that we can teach ourselves to do this. Um, one thing I love to do is walk. And this gives me a time to meditate, and I like to do it by myself. And then uh, I like to also have a place in my home. And I have a, uh, one of my bedrooms I made into a uh, meditation room. And I'll go in there for 10 or 30 minutes uh, a day and just spend some time in there contemplating contemplation. And it's a place that I love. I've decorated the way I want to. You may have a closet. You may have a bathroom. Uh, wherever that place is, find some time. And we're going to talk about that as we go on, about uh, finding time and, and spending it in some meditating. And during that time you're meditating, get that journal out. Everybody should have a journal, a real notebook, not a computer or a phone to put notes in or whatnot. I like the old fashioned journal where you actually sit down and write down the good, the bad, and the ugly for the day. What are your feelings? And when you get through with that meditation time, then you close that notebook and all of those feelings have gone away. Another thing I like to recommend is doing a vision board. Uh, I like to get a new one started every year and I have mine in my walk-in closet so that I see it every morning when I come in and out. And What's on your it, vision board? It, well, uh, it tells me what my goals and objectives are. I'm always wanting to find things that I can pursue for the year. It also shows pictures of that 36-year-old rocking gal and that 67-year-old to remind me how far I have come and how much farther I have to go. And then also on my vision board, I also will have my word for the year. And this year, my word is shine. And you see I'm wearing a star around my neck as a reminder to me that I want to shine this year. I want to do the best I can in my business, in my life, in my health, and also inspire others as I shine throughout 2020. And Have you, Linda, for okay. people who are, are listening, who are in the older age range, say they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s, do you have any tips on what would be involved in starting an exercise program for somebody in that age range who's perhaps a little bit reluctant or fearful of getting hurt or of developing a lot of pain from exercising? Uh, yes. Uh, one thing, you need to listen to your body. Uh, you need to be your own guide. I had a doctor tell me several years ago 
that uh, you will know more about your body than anybody else. And I believe that without a doubt. And you need to make sure that you find somebody that helps you with your personal training or with your exercise program that knows about working with senior adults. Uh, I was working for a short time in a box gym and I had, I had to leave very quickly because it was too upsetting. One of the managers there, a uh, lady came in, she had uh, severe osteoporosis and uh, he always wanted to train with her first or train with any of the new clients first. And so I was sort of listening and seeing what he was telling her and all after uh, being trained uh, in bone building for osteoporosis. And so I was listening to him and he took her over and put her on a overhead shoulder press. One thing that we experience with our spine and all is that uh, we lose that cushion that we have in our spine. Our vertebrae can get stiff and all as we get older. And doing a straight up overhead press is the very worst thing. He could have very easily cracked that lady's vertebra. And I, I, it was all I could do to restrain myself from not going over screaming, get her off that machine. But uh, I was a lady and I didn't. But afterwards I asked him, I said, why did you put her on that machine? Oh, well, she's got osteoporosis. She needs to uh, strengthen her back. I said, there's ways to strengthen the back without doing overhead press because doing that overhead press is so detrimental. And then I looked at him and I said, do you know what her T scores were? He said, what's a T score? And I thought, I've got to leave. So you've got to make sure you find somebody that's been trained and qualified in working with senior adults. Uh, mm -hmm. of putting together a program uh, and going back to talking about bone density and, and an exercise program. I don't know how many of you might be familiar with Dr. Miriam Nelson. She is the author of the strong women, strong bones books. And also the RSVP bone builders program came from Dr. Nelson. And she is a remarkable woman. She uh, does all the research at Tufts university on osteoporosis. She had, if you, if you don't have a book, I really strongly advise you to go out and get it. And right now we've all got so much free time, we can download it or order it from Amazon and start reading it. She has a series of exercises that anyone with any physical challenges can do those exercises, but especially if you have any bone density issues. Mm -hmm. And if you will do her exercises and do them according to what she has laid out in her book for you, your bone density will improve as long as you also are going along and doing eating the high uh, calcium foods and also uh, taking your vitamin D and all. But uh, yes, if you do not have Dr. Nelson's book, please, I, I strongly recommend it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, possibly someone, if you're in a HOA community, you might want to see about um, getting someone in your community or someone in your fitness department to get certified in the RSVP button. Uh, bone builders program and start offering it in your community. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend that somebody start with um, say something like yoga involving stretching before getting involved in a weight lifting or a muscle building program? It depends on uh, what their physical challenges would be. Uh, I always like to get a health history on someone first to find out because if you've had any TIAs, uh, you don't want putting, I do not want to put them down on the floor uh, because that could be detrimental to their health. So uh, I would probably uh, rule out a, a yoga class where they would be actually on the floor. Chair yoga class would be very good. Uh, Pilates is also a very good uh, exercise format to uh, follow as we get older. Uh, it's easy on the bodies, uh, but it's not um, going to hurt you like some strength training. And the exercises that Dr. Nelson recommends doing uh, really stake, take into account for any back issues you have or whatnot. And for people who are not familiar with Pilates, can you tell us what that consists of? Uh, Pilates was developed by Joseph Pilates uh, back around World War II, and uh, dancers uh, were doing it. It, it. What it does is it elongates the muscles instead of really building a muscle up. So if you're a bodybuilder, you're going to have the big, you know, curved muscles that you see like Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
and uh, Mikhail Bresh Breshnikov, uh, who was a ballet dancer, you're going to have muscles more like his, long uh, muscles, uh, very firm core and all. And uh, Pilates can be done on the floor, or they also have, which I highly recommend, is uh, the towers and the tables. And many of the Pilates studios will have these, and that's uh, the way you'll do your Pilates work. And it has all the cables and bars for you to exercise with. And that is just phenomenal. And if you've never done it before, I highly recommend checking out a Pilates studio. And many of them will offer you three or four sessions free, and you can uh, see if you enjoy it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how is that different from Zumba? It's another term that I have heard. Oh, Zumba. Zumba is a dance class. And Zumba is strictly cardio. Uh, there are Zumba hats spun off to Zumba Strong and Zumba Toning classes. But basically, Zumba is a cardio class, and it's just dancing for 60 minutes. And it's to Latin beat, and it's to uh, rap, and uh, possibly some 60s music, too. It's a fun class. Um, it depends on your age as to your, and your balance capabilities as to if I would recommend that to a client. Uh, doing a regular Zumba class. They also have a class called Zumba Gold, which is designed for the senior adult, and that would be most appropriate for anyone uh, as they age to take Zumba Gold. And I know that when I introduced you, I, I mentioned that you are involved in programs for seniors like Silver Slippers, Slip, Silver, Silver Snakers, <laughs> Silver and Fit. How right. are those programs designed for older people as opposed to younger people? What's the differences there? Uh, so many of those programs are a little lower intensity. Uh, some of them you're in chairs exercising as well as standing. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them will put you on the floor. There's different class formats. They have silver sneakers yoga. It brings the intensity down a little bit for the senior adults of exercising and bringing it to the level where you are, but yet still challenging you too. And they have different level type classes that you can take. I know for many of our audience who are nurses who are clinically working now that they are on their feet all day, sometimes for 12 hour shifts, which with adding in time for getting to work and getting home for work or being held over because of crises on the unit can stretch into 13 or 14 hour days. Do you have any thoughts for how to maintain an energy level for that type of demand? Uh, yes. Uh, several things that we can do for our energy. And that's one thing is you need to get your good sleep. Uh, you need to get that good uh, eight hours of sleep each night and uh, we need to do that, especially if you're going through menopause and all, you're going to be developing some um, horrible nights where you're sweating so you can't hardly sleep. And that's why I know I, when I started doing that, I got a little fan that I put on the nightstand and it blew right in my face, which was wonderful. But now they also have the pillows that have the cooling in them. They have mm -hmm. mats that you can put on your beds that will help cool you and all. Plus, another thing that I highly recommend to you to get better sleep, to give you more energy, is the fact that uh, if you have a spouse or a partner, go out and buy them a very thick pair of flannel pajamas. Then that way, when you lower the temperature at night, they won't be complaining that they're cold. <laughs> you're, you're just comfortable. Uh, the other thing is, I know being on your feet so much and everything, you come home exhausted and tired. But it's very important that you find those bits of time in your life where you can exercise. Uh, if you're working in the hospital, you can stand at your desk, you know. Um, and possibly if you're waiting for a phone call or if you're uh, listening to Pat's podcast <laughs> or if you're even uh, just talking with someone with a speaker on the phone, uh, do some squats at the desk. Or at home, uh, if you're waiting for dinner to cook or something to cook in the microwave, do some push-ups on the countertop. 
um, where you put your hands on the countertop and you go back and forth like a push up that you would do on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do uh, reverse lunges there by the countertop and all in your kitchen. And uh, you can even like if you're brushing your teeth, take and, and squat down and see how long you can hold a squat. So the thing is what you have to do is find those 10, 15 minute segments throughout your day where you can exercise. I also like my stoplight exercises because if you're going to work, whether you're taking a train, whether you're driving in a car, you can take and do ab crunches um, while you're uh, waiting for a stoplight. Uh, there's no point in wasting those minutes. Uh, shouldn't be getting on your phone because that stoplight's going to change and somebody's going to blow their horn behind you. Mm -hmm. So sit there uh, tightening up your abs, almost like a Kegel exercise and tightening your butt and then release and, and tightening it and release. Uh, you can also do isometric exercises uh, like with a bicep curl, you know, tightening up your bicep muscles and all uh, while you're in the car. Uh, if you're standing in the grocery store line, which we're all finding ourselves standing in long grocery store lines right now, you again, you can do your isometric exercises, uh, tightening the butt and uh, tightening the core. You can also take and uh, stand up on the toes of your feet there by the grocery cart. And I many times I'll stand up on, and raise my heels up and take them down, working my calves out. So the thing is, when you're extremely busy like that, you still need to set aside two to three days where you're actually getting a good workout in, a good 60 minute workout in. But those other days or those days that you are just completely exhausted, find those 10 or 15 minute segments throughout your day where you're waiting for something mm -hmm. and exercise. Mm -hmm. For me, it's often waiting for dinner to cook when the timer is doing its job. Or yes. because I sit at my computer most of the day, whenever I take a break, which is I try to do every hour, it's to get up, walk around the house, get a different viewpoint, rest my eyes from the computer, and pace around in circles until I feel like I'm ready to sit down again. And the thing is, uh, you can also, uh, Pat, there, uh, when you stand up by your computer, you can do those, those squats I'm talking about. Uh, rather than walking around your house just walking, you can do walking lunges mm. so that you're working those quads and hamstrings and also working your balance of doing those walking lunges. Mm -hmm. Now, my husband has the type of computer desk that raises up so that he can spend some t part of the day standing up and working on his computer as opposed to having to sit all the time. Yes. And that helps tremendously because uh, sitting has gotten to be taken the place almost of how detrimental it is to your health over smoking even mm -hmm. because it's gotten really bad. Mm -hmm. Do you have any last tips for our listener who is concerned with staying fit as he or she ages? Yes, uh, two things, water and fast food. Uh, so often as we age, uh, we're like, oh, well, we don't want to cook a big meal for ourselves. And so we will go buy those fast food restaurants. No, that is not good. No, we all know those are not good. Uh, the thing is, make your refrigerator your fast food restaurant so that on one day of the week, Take your time to wash your vegetables, wash your fruit and everything so that if you want something very quick, you open up that refrigerator and you can grab a clean strawberry or a clean apple out of that refrigerator. Or if uh, you've on that one day you've made up meals for the week that you can take to work or that you can have when you get home so that you can just pop it in that microwave, do those squats, do those push ups, sit down and you have your dinner and water. As we age, our skin, our um, nails, our hair, our, our blood vessels, everything needs water because we're almost in a dehydrated state. And I can't say enough about drinking more water. Um, the thing is what we find out so often, uh, we just, 
we're, we're really almost dehydrated. And I know when I teach classes and all, I really preach to them about the importance of drinking before they come, drinking throughout the class, and then drinking afterwards. The National Academy of Science recommends that we all should have at least 11 cups of water a woman, 11 cups of water a day, and that's eight ounces in a cup. So uh, whatever you do, start drinking more water, drink less alcohol, drink less soda, and use your refrigerator as your fast food restaurant. Oh, that's an excellent summary, Linda. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And how can our listeners find out more about you? Uh, they can reach out to me by email at getfitin5, it's G-E-T-F-I-T-I-N-L-5-E at yahoo.com. And there's five elements of fitness, uh, cardiovascular, muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, and body composition. And that's where I get the five for Get Fit in Five. Very nice, Linda. Thank you so much for your tips. I think the biggest takeaways for me is to make sure that we are physically active every day. Some of us have active jobs where we're on our feet all day and we need so I think focus, and we didn't really talk about this, Linda, but you can be on your feet for 12 hours at a time, maybe three days in a row. And then on your days off, you still need to get that heart rate going back up again and exercising to maintain that fitness. Yes. You emphasize very carefully the importance of avoiding that fast food that's loaded with sugar and salt and tastes ever so good to make us all addicted, but is really bad for us use your refrigerator instead right. to make sure that you're grabbing healthy food. Uh, something that I do whenever I make dinner is I always make extra so that I can make individual portions and freeze them, label them and freeze them with the date, the quantity and the recipe so that I'm grabbing my own food for my lunches instead of eating out of boxes or restaurants. Yes. And I think you also emphasize, Linda, some of the techniques of dealing with the hot flashes of menopause in terms of keeping yourself cool. And for all of us as we age, the importance of being aware of the risk of osteoporosis and being careful in terms of the type of exercise, especially, I think, working with a trainer, if that is something that you decide to do, who is familiar with the needs of your body at the stage of life that you're in now, as opposed to recommending something that could be detrimental to you. Yes. Yes. Right. Thank you so much, Linda. I appreciate thank you being on the show. And I know it's been a very fast half hour for you, for me, and hopefully for you who's listening to this program. Be sure to come back next week. We will have a new guest, a new interview. And if you have the urge to catch up on other podcasts, you can go to podcast.legalnursebusiness.com and click on our past shows and you'll find a wealth of information that's available to you. So you can binge listen when you've got the time and the focus on wanting to get tips for your legal nurse business. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great day.